separated from their families. In the summer, there are usually around 40 homeless people sleeping rough in and around Swansea. But now, as winter sets in, most try and find anywhere they can indoors. Would you shoot, please? With Christmas just five weeks away, a hardcore group of around 10 homeless people still remain living on the streets. And one of them is a homeless drifter who turned up two weeks ago. Waterproof jacket, so we might be able to use it. Paul is a newcomer who settled quickly into life in Swansea. Let me take you to my home. He's teamed up with one of the local homeless, Andy. This is where we're going. This is where I sleep. So we've both got sleeping bags. Uh, I have two. One I give to him to lay down on off the concrete. I've got my mat me, so I put this one on top of it. I sleep very well, to be honest with you. Where the hell's that come from? Oh, damn. There's all my condoms, man. <laughs> that one. <laughs> I've only known this guy a couple of days, and I tell you what, man, honest to God, he's just even Stephen. In the last three nights we've been here, it's been brilliant. If you got thrown out of your house, and you had nowhere else to go, what would you do? Find me. What would you do? Find me. Where would you go? Find me. I'll put you up. I feel safe here. Yeah. Why do you feel safe? Because I've got good company. Well, where do you get that from then? You. <laughs> <sighs> Andy has only been on the streets for six days after being recently released from prison. But unlike Paul, he finds it more of a challenge. Gavin ended up on Swansea streets after he broke up with his wife. I wonder what happened to the star. Oh, no, but it's nice, look at this, you know. Obviously it's closing now, but doing a day, you see I'm queuing up and my mums and my dads and it's like, oh, we're going to see Santa and smiles on their face. It's, it's heartwarming, you know, it's, it's nice, it's nice to see. I wouldn't mind going to see Santa myself, to be honest. <laughs> Gavin has spent the last four months on and off sleeping rough. It's really hard for anyone in his position to get off the streets. Finding even a rented room is difficult, so the only option is to try and get into a hostel for the homeless. But with over 2,000 registered homeless around Swansea, the competition for the 80 beds is stiff. This 13-bed hostel is run by the Cyrenians, a charity who've been working with the homeless for over 40 years. 24-year-old Kelly is one of the lucky ones and has been here for four months. And this is my place. I've actually got one of the bigger rooms in the hostel, so it's, um, it's quite nice. Two years ago, Callie had a full-time job with the bookmakers, but her hours were cut and she couldn't afford to pay the rent. Everything sort of started falling apart. So I basically, through my work and the lack of hours they were providing, lost my flat. With nowhere to live, most young people would return home. Callie doesn't have this option, as she's fallen out with her mum. It was just sort of, I suppose, your typical rows that you have when you're a teenager and you, I, I'm going to live on my own. Um, uh, there was a bit more to it with my mum because we didn't really get on. She's not really a, um, a maternal person anyway. And it just sort of pushed me to the edge. Even though Callie has a place in a hostel, officially she is still homeless. With the hostel's help, she's hoping to find somewhere permanent to live before Christmas. 
I'd rather be out working, doing a 40 hour week than sitting here having to play frustration through boredom. <laughs> Christmas is just four weeks away. Most of those still on the streets have gathered on the Kingsway. This should be a good time for giving, but it's not working for Lee. Two, three, four, four pound, nearly five pound. Just a lack of withdrawal, you know, when you're on the streets, man. At the moment, it's not like happening, like, because Christmas is coming, everybody's saving, they're not coming out, and uh, we keep on trying, like, you know what I mean? Ever resourceful, Paul conjures up hot soup for his less fortunate mates. It's a nice bowl of soup my friend give me, like, because I can't cope anymore. I'm 43, man. When I was younger, I was up and coming, like. All of them will be sleeping rough tonight. It's dangerous to sleep on your own. So if you can, like with a couple of friends now, try to sleep together. It keeps us warm, innit? Cuggling up, you know? Like little baby rats we are. I'm going to get my head down. <laughs> I'd realised that Paul was a bit different from the others, and often needed a break. Mm. That's my bed for this evening. I shall um, sleep very well, very, very nice and warm out the rain. But all I do is pull this along here, put the lid up, no wind, no rain, no people. Peace and quiet. For the last four weeks, Stevie's been out sleeping rough. There's a library here where he often escapes the cold, but it's not just in the daytime. He slept here last night. In that corner there, it's always CCTV, so you're not going to get attacked or beaten up and when you sleep in. Because that has happened to a couple of people. Drugs and alcohol are a common cause of homelessness, and Stevie is a heroin addict who spent time in prison for his habit. Oh. I tried it once or twice. My mate came down then when I was in Marston, asked me could I score him a bag. I said, yeah. He shared it with me. He kept coming down day after day for a fortnight. And I was hooked then. Recently, he ended up sharing a house with another drug user. I couldn't stay there so because I don't want that lifestyle no more. So I chose to be on the streets. It won't be for too long anyway, month for two. I get a hostel place. But I just don't want to go on drugs again. Like, been there, done that, don't want to do it again. Like. I'm not going to do it again. Also run by the Cyrenians charity, the St. Matthew's Church drop-in centre offers a place where the homeless can get cleaned up and some decent food. They run courses too, and Stevie's signed up. He's doing everything he can to stay away from temptation. The other side of the grill. It should be handy, because it's taking up to four o'clock. So it's half a day done then, isn't it? Because otherwise I'll be on the streets on my own. Wandering round Swansea, thinking about getting a drink, wouldn't I? Basically, because there'd be nothing else to do, is it? For anyone homeless and separated from their family, Christmas can prove to be the toughest time of the year. The last I'd heard of Tracy was that she'd left Swansea three weeks ago, and now she's returned. I'm gonna have to sleep here again tonight. In the wet and the rain and the cold. So that's my joys of life in the dark, sleeping in the rain and the cold. So 
I can smell men drawing and it's disgusting. For Tracy, this is an especially difficult time, as her mother died exactly one year ago today. My head is actually like a spinning top at the moment. <laughs> I don't like being in the town when it's very busy, because you can see all the families together and all the kids, and no, so it's very... It's not a Christmas for me this year. Then she runs into Marie, a friend from one of the churches that provides breakfast for the homeless. Marie shares the same name as Tracy's mum. So, and it's your mum's anniversary today. Yeah. We buried her uh, the 23rd of... Uh, 23rd of the, no, December. Yeah. Oh. So there'll be a big mass for her tonight, basically, all the Andes and that. It's a sad time for you right now, isn't it? Yeah. It's a sad time for the next couple of days. Yeah. Well, I just have to hold up and be brave. And I, just, I, I think you're a strong girl, you know that? You really are. You're a yeah. tough little cookie. You're yeah. strong. And that's what keeps you going, I think, as well. And I think when you do get right, you're going to be helping people in the street. I just feel that for you. I really do. Take care. Bye. Take care, In the early evening, Tracy's thoughts are still with her mother. I have to go into the church. I have to show my respect for my mum. She wouldn't be happy if she found out I was living on the street, but at least she's in heaven happy looking down on me and I hope everything goes well and the whole family are okay and I wish them all a happy Christmas. My mum's looking down on us. For most of her life, Tracy has struggled with alcoholism and because of it, her family have disowned her. She's made one attempt at rehab already without success. Tracy feels the need to make a call to her sister. Hello, Lorraine. Just, uh, just want to say uh, happy uh, anniversary for mother and that, and just let you know I'm okay, stuff. I'm just trying to get my life together and stuff, you know. I'm on my own. I'm on my own living on the street. I'm living on the streets. I just wish things could change, but they can't. Because I'm under destroying my life. You now I'm aware I have no friends, I'm, not, I'm living on the street, I'm trying to get into hostels and that all the time, you know? Yeah. Yeah. All right, happy Christmas, happy New Year, love. Right, just tell the family I miss them and that, right? I love you, take care, bye, bye. Bye, bye. I love you too, bye, bye. Yeah, it was sad. It was just, she just said it was hard, it's just trying to get your life together. The St. Matthew's Church drop-in centre has now become part of Paul's regular morning routine. Kay is one of their volunteers. He's down and out, I give him hand. Buy him a cup of tea. I'm nice. From some pears. Really tasty. Nice and nice. I've got a problem with him. I can't bite him. Oh yeah, I was going to say. You've got some teeth, but I haven't got a lot of them. Yeah. They are about three weeks old. Lovely. So they're nice then when they go soft. <laughs> Thank you for these. We Funny. met Monday and he asked me out, but I told him I'm not, uh, and I'm unattached. Of course he meant, but yeah. no, I do. So. <laughs> He's also arranged to meet another new friend under the giant TV in Castle Gardens. I just was quite amazed when Paul told me that he, he was homeless, and then I just thought that I could help Paul out a little bit. Paul's new friend is James from Neath. They only met two days ago, and now they're best pals. Early Christmas present. <laughs> oh, no. There's the there's the, the, the oh, torch. Thank you so much. Mobile phone. Have you really? Yeah. Oh, oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> oh look at them. I nice pair of boots. 
Thank you so much. <laughs> Didn't I tell you good things happened to me? Paul Bell. It's a mystery to me how Paul, who's been living rough for years, remains so positive. He's lived on the streets for most of his life. When he was 14, his violent father drove him from the family home. He ended up in care and eventually ran away. For over 30 years, he's had no contact with the rest of his family. But now he's thinking about going back home. I don't know if I've got nieces, nephews, nothing. I, don't, I, I just don't know. I might have a big family there waiting for me, I don't know. But I need to, um, excuse me, I need to, 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 to sort it out. Even if I get a knock back, it'll break me up. But at least I'll know. And they'll know that I'm still alive, you know. That's what I want to do. But sometimes I can't be asked because I don't know what sort of heartache I'm going to get. If I go there and I find out my mother's dead, that'd kill me, I would. Each day he lives with the dilemma of either seeking out his family, which could result in rejection, or to live the rest of his life, simply not knowing whether they will take him back. At the Cyrenians' hostel, Callie is finally moving out. With their help, she's found a place of her own. Bye-bye, hostel. This is the best move ever. <laughs> You're now officially... Tenant. Tenant. No longer homeless. Off the homeless list. Yeah. That's it now. I'm staying off the list. <laughs> the most exciting thing about this room, by far. Just because girls love wardrobes. Hello! Morning. What a day! A local charity have helped her out. In there, please. Yeah, yeah, thank you. All this furniture, and it's only cost her £80. Double bed time. Lovely, thank you. That sounds promising. In the hostel, everything was laid on, and she didn't have to worry about bills. Now she's on her own, but she can still call on the charities who've helped her should she need to. Just got to unpack now and sort everything out. With four days until Christmas and the weather closing in, the mood amongst those on the streets changes. At the Swansea mission of Mother Teresa's Sisters of Mercy, the nuns offer a lifeline. As Christmas draws nearer, it's those from broken families who find life even tougher. And yet another week sleeping rough has taken its toll on Stevie. It is hard life, like, yeah, because um, you haven't um, got no, nowhere to go to with you. You haven't got a home with you. I miss my relatives, my father's dead, and my mother doesn't talk to me, so Christmas is um, just a drunken blur. Basically, yeah, basically. The reality is that Stevie and others could end up sleeping rough over Christmas. Ask you sure today, what you should sleep in. There are no chance. The last time I saw Georgica, he was living in a loft. But now he's back out on the streets again and he's been asking his friends if they will take him in over Christmas. Sorry, Jorgit. Sorry. Sorry, next time. Georgika, along with the last remaining rough sleepers, turn up at the access point. 
to see if they can get Swansea's one and only emergency bed. Whoever gets it will have a hostel room over Christmas. I mean, think about doing some crime just to go back to jail, like. I mean, because at least I got a bed then. You know what I mean? As the last of the rough sleepers wait for the chance of a bed, the town is packed with last-minute Christmas shoppers, oblivious to the desperate plight of others. Over the last two months, I'd noticed Sarah on the streets. My trainers are soaking like, you know, they'll never dry unless I'm indoors for a couple of hours, like, or something. Sarah's 23. She's another one from a broken family. Not that long ago, her life was very different. I was a waitress for four years, I think, three or four years. I was running the cafe, I was opening up every morning, I was on the chairs and everything out, and I lost my flat and my job because my um, boss was my landlord, because um, I fell behind on my rent. You know, things have just changed so much. It's, I don't know. It's like hard to get back where I was because, you know, people just want to employ people that don't look presentable and stuff. And it's hard to look presentable when you're on the streets, really. Women are usually given priority, but Sarah's already had the emergency bed for three nights this week. I've had it quite a lot, you know, this week. So I don't mind if I don't really get it, you know, because there's other people that need to be housed as well. Then Ian, the access point charity worker, calls Georgica over. Today, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, okay, Monday, okay. Tuesday. Tuesday? Five days. Wow. Six o'clock, yeah? Oh. Okay. Thank you very much. No problem, I just take care. Merry Christmas, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Monday, Tuesday. Monday, she Tuesday. Ta na na ni na ni na na. Bye bye, kids. Bye bye, Missy. Bye-bye, lady. Merry Christmas. Thank you very much, lady. With the one emergency bed allocated, the others will be on the streets. But there is a glimmer of hope. The access point has special funding to pay for bed and breakfasts for the homeless over Christmas. But they have a problem. We've tried every B&B in Swansea, to be honest with you, every B&B in Swansea. It's we'll keep trying, we're going to try and sort of for you, yeah? Okay. Sorry. So far, none of the B&Bs will have them. Thoughts turn to yet another night sleeping out. Just, I can cope with the cold, but it's the rain, I hate the rain. <laughs> then for one more of them, there's good news. The hostel yeah. has offered a makeshift bed. Yeah. I've got the sofa. <sighs> Yeah, happy days, happy days, five days, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. Oh, uh, lovely, lovely stuff, lovely stuff. But Stevie can't understand why the others can't get the same deal. Emergency bed for one. You go well, I've tried. And then there's a breakthrough. Okay, we've managed to get you into B&B, &B, okay? Oh, this is for five nights. So your last night will be Tuesday. Thank you. I'll stay in all day, every day. Yeah, it's all right, you know. Thank you. Hello. Hello. The lucky three head across town to the only bed and breakfast in Swansea that's willing to take them in. Number 20 here. Okay, who's number 20? Oh, sorry. Yeah. TV and everything. <laughs> Big bed. <laughs> oh, it's nice. What are we doing first then? Now you've checked in. Jump in the shower. This is lovely, this is. <laughs> really nice. I didn't even think that I was going to get the emergency bed because I've had it often this week. So, you know, as far as I knew, I was going to be out on the streets for Christmas. It's really nice that they've done this for us. You know, it's really nice. It's Christmas Day, 7.30 a.m. Paul spent the night back in his favourite spot.
All these people here are in their little beds and they get up in the morning and the kiddies are all happy and everybody's getting Christmas dinner on and everybody's happy and stuff. I'm happy. I'm a happy dude. Can I show you my Christmas presents now? Because I'll be dying to get these out. <laughs> <laughs> the presents are from his new friend, James. Fishing rod. <laughs> uh, a new bag. A Welsh shirt. You know what's funny about this? I'll be sat here all night hungry. Look, I'll just found this bag. <laughs> I'll see you hope. <laughs> So happy Christmas! A lot of people that care. <laughs> Morning! Happy Christmas! Alright, oh, no, mate. <laughs> it's a funny time of year, Christmas, because you start reminiscing. During his 30 years on the road, Paul's had his share of heartache. I wouldn't change a thing though, you know. I just keep on shuffling. I miss my mum. After spending an hour or so with Paul, I went back home to a Christmas day with my family. But I couldn't stop thinking about the many homeless people I'd met during my three months in Swansea. Every day they face the reality of survival, often in the cold and on the streets, and for whom Christmas Day is just another day. <laughs> 